In this video, I'll be breaking down the A plus higher time frame bias checklist. So you guys have a mechanical method of actually understanding the higher time frame and getting a higher time frame bias for your trading. Now, all of this is going to be ICT concepts. I sat through three and a half, four and a half, two and a half long hour ICT videos to actually grasp these concepts where I'll be breaking it down in literally 10 minutes for you guys. So if you are unable to sit through this whole 10 minute video, then there is no hope for you in trading whatsoever. Now, jumping straight into the video, guys, we need to the first main things is, right, we have so many entry methods. ICT has the best entry methods, and I teach all of those on our YouTube. However, none of them mean anything, and I mean anything, when you don't have a higher time frame bias. Okay, guys? So, we need to understand and have a checklist. All of those things on that checklist must be ticked off before even looking for entries. Okay, guys? So this is going to be a very mechanical method of you guys actually understanding the higher time frame bias. So the higher time frame bias, by the higher time frame bias, I mean, right, the weekly, daily, and the four hour. These three is where you're going to actually derive your bias from. Now, you always want to start off your week on the weekly time frame. So on a Sunday night, whenever the market opens up, I come and I analyze the market from the weekly time frame. Now, first things first, right guys, I'm gonna be breaking down exactly what I gave out last week and how I actually derived the bias for last week. Okay, I'm gonna rewind. And if you don't, guys don't believe that, obviously I can show you in the free telegram I gave out. In the free telegram, I gave exactly what we was looking for high on, on gold for the higher time frame. As you can see, I started on the weekly time frame first and I analyzed everything that I had to. So if you guys do want to join that free telegram, do join it in the link below. We share tons of tons of tons of value. Um, and whoever comes from YouTube and messages this app um, that you've come from YouTube, we'll pass 100K, 200K, 50K prop firm challenge for you for absolutely free uh, for um, HFT firms, just in celebration of my most recent payouts that I share in the telegram and our steady growth. So jumping straight into the video. First things first, right? Higher time for advice. You want to start on the weekly. Now, what are the market's key aims, okay? To rebalance, right? Rebalance, rebalance inefficiencies and grab, grab liquidity. These are the two main concepts of the whole market. No matter what you're looking at, the market is either rebalancing an inefficiency or grabbing liquidity. Whatever you're looking at, there's nothing else the market does. Now, what is an inefficiency? Inefficiencies are imbalances, fair value gaps, things like that. Liquidity, obviously being weekly highs and lows, session highs and lows. Um, but I'll break it down shortly into that in just a second. So now we understand what the market actually does. So when you're starting out on the weekly time frame, you need to understand where does the inefficiencies or liquidity lie. So on this gold chart, right, for the last week, why does why did I have a bearish bias? Now, if you look to the upside, what is there to the upside? What inefficiency is there to the upside that the, the weekly chart has to go and fill? Nothing. There is nothing. And how likely is it that you'll go and break a old time high? Without any sort of catalyst on a random week, why would you think that this all-time high will get taken? And is that the closest liquidity? No. So everything for a bullish bias has now been eliminated eliminated on the weekly time frame. So we now know on the weekly, okay. On the weekly, there's no inefficiency. And no liquidity. Okay, so now weekly done, okay, um, to upside. So we know to the upside there's nothing, okay. Uh, don't mind my spelling, by the way, guys. Okay, cool, done. Let's jump into the daily time frame. Now, however, in the daily time frame, yeah, let's move these closer. So in the daily time frame, what did I have? What do we see on the daily time frame now? So, so one thing I did forget to mark out was where is the closest liquidity? Obviously, the sell side pool here. Look, we have this liquidity. 
And not only that, we also have this weekly low. This weekly low is also a liquidity area because weekly highs and lows are full of a lot of liquidity. So we can mark out these sell side liquidities. Okay, done. We jump into the weekly. Daily, sorry. What do we see on the daily time frame? Do we see any form of inefficiency to the upside? Yes, we do. So in the weekly time frame, we have derived that the weekly has to go to the downside because there's no inefficiency to fill to the upside, nor is there any close by uh, buy side liquidity. So we know the weekly, the weekly, so I just want to touch on weekly, bearish. Okay, done. Drop into the daily time frame now. In order to move lower, remember, we need liquidity and we also need to fill inefficiencies. What do we have here? efficiency we have a fair value gap that needs to be filled before we move down and even if we do move down first we know that that still will get returned to because that inefficiency will not be left okay so we have a bullish inefficiency so we know that there is a weekly to be bearish so we know that the weekly is going to go to the downside we also know on the daily there's an if efficiency which can fuel the move to the downside so we wanted a move into the efficiency efficiency to be filled like so and then we can move low to to meet our weekly targets so we already know the weekly is bearish we now need to derive when that is going to happen is there any inefficiency or liquidity to take before doing so Yes, there is on the lower time frame. So on the daily, we knew that they were moving to the high upside. Why? Because there's inefficiency. And not only that, if I drop in now into the four hour, do we have, what do we have? We have trend line liquidity. Trend line liquidity. This is telltale signs that this is going to get taken. Okay. Now, retail traders use this as a bounce. ICT traders know that this is liquidity. We're going to take out all of those sellers all of those guys who are going to bounce from this trend line, feel the inefficiency, then move down. So daily, we know there's an inefficiency. So we are now bullish until... Again, don't mind my spelling. Bullish until the inefficiency gets filled. Okay, cool. But we know, remember, we are bearish in total. But... To move lower, there is so much liquidity and inefficiency to the upside. We have to take that before we move lower. So we've identified on the four hour trend line liquidity to upside. So bullish until that's taken. So now we are bullish until that's taken. So there we go. Daily bullish four hour also bullish so what, what do we look for look for in the beginning of the week we only look for buys until that liquidity is getting taken now look at this last week's low gets swept what do we do we simply go and take the trend line liquidity move into the efficiency inefficiency sorry and then what do we do look at that now we make our way back to the downside because we know the weekly was going to be bearish. Okay, guys, so that's how you break down the higher time frame and really derive a buyer. So now if I'm going forward, um, what do we have? We have this sell side liquidity pool here. I'm still bearish. I want gold to come down. We have these fair value gaps that we need to fill in um, on the weekly time frame. We have fair value gap one. And then we also have this sell side uh sorry sell side liquidity pool there look at all these fair value gaps tell tell signs that price is going to come to the downside jump into the daily what do we have in the daily time frame i would potentially use this as a fair value gap from here to here but you can use it from there we go fair value gap we move into there we then move away what do we have in the four hour do we have anything in the four hour fair value gap here within that fair value gap what do we have 
a breaker, breaker block. You see how everything lines up, we get a move into here. If we don't get the desired reaction in the lower time frames in this area, we have a fair value gap here. We will then get it here. Then we go to the downside, so we're bearish for the rest of the week. If, however, we move into this first, we could potentially move back up to, because remember, these inefficiencies need to be filled, whether that's in the start of the week. So if I grab my highlighter, where's my highlighter? Um, so maybe we move like this and then this or scenario number two, we move like this and then this because we still have to fill that inefficiency. But that's how you get your higher time frame bias. And then once you've derived your higher time frame bias, it's as easy as just dropping into lower time frames and looking at execution models like the ones I teach on my Telegram or um, even on my YouTube, sorry. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Remember guys, do join our Telegram in the link below. So much free value. Our membership, our mentorship is literally $49.99 for lifetime at the moment. I don't even think you can buy lunch for that at the minute. So much free value in the in the telegram obviously we have a weekly breakdowns courses um our strategy that we trade for entries uh, but yeah do join that in the link below